Hi guys, welcome back to Quran Logics, where I take a very quick look at the logical thinking used and applied in the Islamic Quran. Now, according to the Quran, we have millions of, well, all right, almost, of usages of the word sign. And the word for a sentence in the Quran is ayah, which is sign in Arabic. Now, in part one of the series, I already pointed out how illogical the destruction of the most prominent signs of a god, the churches, temples, synagogues, or whatever, and in the case of Islam, the Kaaba in Mecca, how, well, illogical this is. There is no special protection for them in the real world. So the, the usage of a sign to indicate something to the reader of a book is already used in the Christian Bible, where sign signifies, <laughs> pardon the pun, lots of nonsense as is shown in Mark chapter 16. So a sign does not always make sense. But because believers still believe, blindly believe, those who have tried to test and thus verify these claims, well, they're now dead. Now, in the Islamic Quran, you get intelligent sentences like in chapter 30, where people are encouraged to reflect, understand, use common sense, uh, but unfortunately, this is ignored. And instead, we get hundreds of commands or claims that are totally nonsensical and illogical. Like, how exactly is raising a corpse from the dead by slapping it with a piece of steak a sign? If this cannot be reproduced, ever, wouldn't a fact make more sense than just a sign? And a sign, a sign points you in the correct direction, but it's not the goal itself. So telling me a goal is over there doesn't tell me what the goal actually is, what the benefits are of having or being with this goal, what the description is. It doesn't really tell me how to get there, what obstacles I might have to overcome, or what equipment I may need. Come on, it would be so much easier if I were simply presented with what I need and have it done with. This constant hinting at something is utterly frustrating. What is totally illogical, however, well, it is that those who are provided with these so-called signs are believers, i.e. those who already submit, who act on blind faith alone and don't think anymore, at least not rationally. Those who would actually need and actually require some sort of convincing sign, yeah, people like me, well, if facts are too much to expect, why am I neglected? And, and why, when I ask or we ask questions about a claim, are we severely punished just for asking? Because we would like to know what is behind the sign, where it goes to and what the point is. Come on, if the author of the Quran is a perfect God, the book should be perfect. And it should not contain any errors and for sure it shouldn't be illogical. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.